Fantasy Football fam, what's going on? This is Fantasy Football AF. I'm your host, Mitchell Renz. Today, I'm drinking Top Cutter Indian Pale Ale, courtesy of Tavor and the box of beer they sent me. You want a custom box of beer from craft breweries all over the country? I need you to head over to Tavor.com right now. Use that promo code CHATSPORTS for $10 off your very first purchase. Let's open this bad boy, and Harris, let's send it. The first nudie I'm sending you guys is John Ross, and it is Cincinnati wide receiver number two because, well, he's listed as the wide receiver two right now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And, well, I hope he does a little bit better than what he did last year because he scored negative two fantasy points last year. He had one carry for 12 yards, and that resulted in a fumble, and he didn't play all that much anyway. The guy played in only three games last year, but let's not forget how amazing of a prospect John Ross was coming out of college. I mean, he was a stud at Washington, and yeah, he ran the fastest 40-yard dash time with 4.22. Like, that is absolutely blazing. And if this is a guy who can get on the field just a little bit more and maybe get a few extra targets, he's a guy who you might be able to rely on. And right now, he's going as wide receiver 67 at the, all the way at the end of the draft. So, worst case scenario, he might not be a bad guy to pick up. Okay, the next bit of nudes I got coming in for you guys is around Eric Decker. Eric Decker, he signed a one-year deal with the Patriots. And, well, I think this is big news because Edelman's going to be out the first four games. And I really like Jordan Matthews. Jordan Matthews was one of my sleepers because I was like, okay, Tom Brady, check. Yeah, no, that's about it. Edelman's not going to be there. Tom Brady's there. This is a guy who could actually see a decent amount of targets the first four weeks. And, well, when he's a guy who's going that late in drafts, actually undrafted right now, yeah, why not take a guy who could help you the first four weeks? You could get Edelman. Maybe he'll supplant him. I would imagine he's going to supplant Edelman. But Eric Decker, I think, is a guy who you could at least somewhat rely on in terms of fantasy football in your leagues because, again, Patriots, one of the best passing offenses every single year. So he's going to be a guy first four weeks. Why not get him? Maybe somebody's stupid enough then to buy him high once Edelman comes back. Don't tell him. But only three touchdowns the last 19 games. Not crazy about that with Decker. Okay, next bit of news I got for you guys coming up. Dalvin Cook, he's ready to go right now. He's ready to go right now, and that's coming from his coach. So 74 carries last year, three touchdowns. This guy was a, a stud until he got hurt. I mean, he averaged 88 and a half rushing yards a game and was just a guy when he came out of Florida State. I wasn't totally sold on him, but he showed really quick that he can be an every down running back. And I know last week I talked about a guy like Latavius Murray, but this is a guy, Dalvin Cook, who should be an absolute monster with the football on a team that's going to be really good this year with new quarterback Kirk Cousins. So, new quarterback Kirk Cousins, a really good defense, and a running back that's super talented. Yeah, that's somebody that I really want to invest in for my fantasy football team because, well, dude's going to be a stud, and he's going to be a guy who I think could actually win you your league this year. That's why he was one of my breakouts. And ultimately, when you need to find those kind of guys to help you win your league, and it's going to be a guy like Dalvin Cook because, again, I think he's going to break out, and it's somebody that you definitely, definitely should invest in. You know what you guys also should look into? It's a company called Tavor, because they are freaking awesome. And in this beer that I'm drinking, hang on a sec, it's a damn good beer. And I can't get it here in Texas, and that drives me nuts. So Tavor, they hooked me up with this craft IPA from Washington, Top Cutter, shout out to you. And they're gonna hook you up as well. Head over to Tavor.com right now. Use promo code CHATSPORTS for $10 off your very first purchase. But this isn't just about beer, or I mean, I wish I could do a show just about beer. I definitely would. But I also want to know from Dalvin Cook fans out there, 10 touchdowns over or under for Dalvin Cook this upcoming season. If you think it's going to be over, type 1. If you think it's going to be under, type 2. For me, Dalvin Cook, I'm going to go over because I think this guy's going to be a monster if he plays all 16 games. Okay, I did some news. Now I'm going to get into a nice little segment that I like to call my AF of the week. And it's just a segment that is just fantasy football as fuck, and I love it. So the first one I got coming up, does size matter? And, well, I went on a date this past weekend, and it kind of mattered there, I'll be honest with you guys. But you look at a guy like Deion Lewis, he's only 5'8", 195 pounds, and then there's a monster of a man called Derrick Henry, who, uh, I don't know if you've seen him, he's a pretty big freaking dude. 6'3", 247 pounds, and I encourage you to go on my Twitter, humble brag here, Mitchell Renz365, I tweeted something out. Went pretty viral, and it's just these two guys standing next to each other. And I'll be honest, Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis standing next to each other kind of looks like an NFL player, and then somebody who you'd like pick up maybe in a peewee football game, because it is that big of a difference. 
Regardless, though, Deion Lewis is a guy who you shouldn't sleep on this year just because he's one of those smaller running backs. And he's a guy who last year, six touchdowns, 896 yards. That's incredible. One of my favorite stats, third best yards after contact in the NFL last year with 3.17. And those are among running backs with over 150 carries. The guy above him was Derrick Henry, I will say that. But zero fumbles last year, only five running backs the last two years can say that they've had zero fumbles with over 180 touches. So Deion Lewis is reliable. I understand he's a little bit smaller, but the size really matter. I want to know from you guys, right? So based on ADP, which Titans running back would you rather draft right now? So Derrick Henry is going in the middle of the round three, right? At pick 307. Deion Lewis, he's going at the end of round five. He might even start to keep falling back at near the round six. So based on ADP, which Titans running back would you rather draft? Derrick Henry type one or Deion Lewis type two? For me, I'm typing two and it's Deion Lewis. And from what I've, I'll say, gathered the last few weeks, type two seems to be a little bit better than type one. So, all right, that was my AF of the week. And now I'm gonna send this over to my girl, Jordan, with a nice little word from our sponsor, Tavor. What's going on, you guys? It's now time for Battle of the Brews, sponsored by Tavor. Which beer should Mitch drink next week on Fantasy Football AF? It's a battle of the IPAs. I've got a fantastic voyage from New England in a bison beatbox from Virginia. So type A in the comments if you think it should be a fantastic voyage next week or type B if you think it should be the bison beatbox. And make sure to head on over to Tavor.com, but use that promo code CHATSWORTS to get $10 off your order, $20 or more. Oh, I definitely needed to drink that beer because, man, this beer from Tavor, guys, I'm telling you, it's really good. You can't just get it anywhere. Go ahead, head over to Tavor.com right now. Get your guys some beers. Okay, Josh Gordon, is he going to be joining the Browns? This is part of my rumors segment. I got three rumors coming up for you, and I'm going to kick it off with Josh Gordon rejoining the Browns. So right now, Josh Gordon is not at training camp. Why? Because he just needs to get his, I don't know, shit together, apparently. And it kind of gets me angry because this is a guy who has so much talent, dripping with talent. And right now, he's going in the middle of round three. Is that justifiable for a guy right now who is ranked as wide receiver 14? He's going over guys like Stephon Diggs. He's going over guys like Demarius Thomas. That does not give me confidence in drafting a guy who's not even at training camp. For a guy who had 18 catches last year and only one touchdown. He has only one touchdown his last 10 games, guys. Is that really somebody you want to buy into that early? Then you know all the other stuff going on. Like, What happens if something happens with Josh Gordon again? He's done, like probably forever. And now they're looking at guys like Des Bryant for a reason, because I think they are scared about a guy like Josh Gordon, who again, is not at training camp. And when guys aren't at training camp, that leads to injuries, that leads to bad chemistry. And it's something that I just, I'm telling you, do not draft Josh Gordon this year. I wouldn't draft him as a top 20 wide receiver, let alone at 14. I don't even know if I would take him in the top 25. And I actually saw on Twitter the other day, somebody ranked him as wide receiver five, ranked him over DeAndre Hopkins. What the hell is that? That just blows my mind. I'm sick and tired of seeing this Josh Gordon hype. Don't, don't, don't draft him. Please don't draft him. Okay, next rumor I got for you guys coming up on the board. It's a running back, and it's a guy that I absolutely love, and it's Sony Michelle. And it's, well, not so good because I don't know if he's going to play week one. He's going to go under a knee procedure, and oh, anytime I hear knee procedures this time of the offseason, it could lead to injuries, and it could lead to things down the road, right? I understand he's on track to play week one, but do I really have the confidence that he's going to be ready to go? Because, well, I tweeted out today on Twitter, like, one thing that I got wrong or I thought that I would get right. I don't even remember what it was. I've been drinking already, guys. I'm sorry. But I really thought Mike Gilsey was going to be the running back to own for the Patriots last year because, well, I was like, oh, everything's lining up. And I think the exact same thing with Sony Michelle. And maybe I'm a fool for believing that I can predict what Bill Belichick is going to do because if I could... Yeah, I probably wouldn't be sitting in this chair. Like, I really wouldn't. I'd be sitting in a much nicer office, probably overlooking, I don't even know, a sea somewhere with a yacht because I'd be able to predict what's going on in that man's head. But Sony Michelle is a guy who, if he can get on the field and be healthy, there's a reason why he was one of my breakouts, and I absolutely love him this year if he can play all 16 games. Okay, next room I got for you guys heading up on the board, and it's the last one I got for you, is Doug Baldwin, a wide receiver one. And well, there's a report right now that he may miss the entire preseason with a knee injury. And at first when I read that, I was like, oh man, there's no way that I'm going to be able to believe in this guy because if he goes down, that's also really going to impact a guy like Russell Wilson. But yet, he's missed only two games in seven years. And that guy's a tough dude. And when he gets on the field, 
there's not a lot taking him off. I mean, he hasn't missed a game since 2012. And right now he's going at the beginning of round three. I get it. But I think he's going to see a lot of targets. I think he's going to see an increase in production because Seahawks defense, bad. Jimmy Graham, gone. Paul Richardson, gone. Who else is Russell Wilson going to throw to? I don't really know. And if Doug Baldwin's going to give me 16 games, you could definitely say that I'm uh, on board with him being a wide receiver one. I mean, he was wide receiver at 11 last year in standard and PPR. Doug Baldwin's consistent, and he just doesn't get any love, I think, because his name's Doug Baldwin. Not a sexy name. I get it. I guess it's no Mitchell Renz 365. Okay, which wide receiver will score more fantasy points in 2018? If you think it's going to be Doug Baldwin, type 1. If you think it's going to be Tyreek Hill, type 2. The reason why for these two players, they're back-to-back -back in my rankings, and I've been debating whether or not I'm going to flip them because with this Doug Baldwin injury, it's really tough. Which wide receiver is going to score more fantasy points in 2018? Doug Baldwin or Tyreek Hill? Fantasy football fam, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to Fantasy Football AF. And if you guys want to get all my shows, head over to YouTube, head over to Facebook, and we're on iTunes too. So check us out there. Until next time, cheers.